everyone, welcome back to my channel. On this week's episode, I will be showing you how to go to Macau from Hong Kong. There are five different ways. Make sure you stay until the end. Comment below if you have any questions and I will try my very best to answer them. Enjoy! And if you need caption, you just have to turn on the CC button on the bottom right corner. Morning, morning, morning guys. Actually, it's not even morning anymore. It's 2 30 in the afternoon. Going to Macau now, I will tell you a little bit about how to buy the tickets and how to get first class for cheap, although it's only 55 minutes. I'm just gonna share quickly, and I'm not encouraging you to do it, by the way. When you get to the ferry terminal here in Xiaowan, there's also a ferry terminal in TST, by the way. There are always people selling tickets in front of the ticket booth. They look like regular people. You will see them holding a dash of cash and tickets. So you go ask them how much it is. So for for instance, this first class ticket usually costs, I think, 400 today's weekend, right? I think 395 to be exact. I will find out the exact price, but they were selling for 250 and it was a faster ticket. Like, just a regular ticket is already, I think, 175 or 180. And so, I'm only paying a little bit more for first class and uh, much cheaper than regular ticket price. And I didn't want to wait until an hour later for the next 3 p.m. flight because the 2 30 economy is sold out, anyways. Yes, I did get it for cheaper and I love that it is so convenient. It's, they are very trustworthy though. I'm not encouraging you to do it. All these years that I bought, uh, there's not one time that I had a problem. But you do have to pay with cash. That is the only thing. This journey, the ferry, would take about 55 minutes to an hour. If you want to take the helicopter, you want to do the, um, have the experience, it is about 15 minutes only and it's about 500 US dollars. It's quite scenic though, so if you want to try it, definitely, if you have the budget, you know, you should do it. I've done it years ago, but at that time it was so much cheaper, like so, so, so much cheaper for some reason. I don't know if it's because my friend hooked me up or something. But you do have to carry your luggage down, so I do not suggest to bring very heavy luggage. This is the seats for the first class, actually it's the same. The other one is just a little bit more crowded and a bit more narrow. Alright guys, so let me tell you a little bit about Macau. It was a Portuguese colony until 1999. Just like Hong Kong, Hong Kong was also a British colony until 1997. It is a special administrative region just like Hong Kong. But the difference between Macau and Hong Kong is that Hong Kong is more like a finance hub, you know. Macau is more like an entertainment hub. Whatever we don't have in Hong Kong, that you would have in Macau, like the casinos. There are so much casino. I, I mean, it's even known as the gambling capital of the world. You must think of Vegas when you are when I'm saying this, but until you get to Macau, you don't know what is the gambling capital. The hotels there are just out of the world. The rooms, the decoration, the architecture is absolutely stunning. All right, so the difference between economy and the first is that you can pick a drink, of course, water and a little snacks. See you guys in Macau, less than an hour. I arrived in Macau. The journey took about one hour and five minutes this time. We're gonna go through custom and get on the free shuttle to the hotel. The good thing about Macau is that there are so many free shuttle, but aside from that, actually transport is not the most convenient. The sign that says hotel bus. There are taxis in the front, but the hotel buses are just over there. You don't actually need a hotel booking to go take these hotel buses. So you can actually search where your home or stay or hotel is nearby and you can just take the relative bus like this time I'm staying at the Grand Hyatt so I would take the one either going to the wing or to City of Dreams because it's just next to it so if you're staying at the Londoner and the Parisian and Venetian they all have their buses for the shuttle you can just ask the people they will let you know because even Grand Hyatt is not on any of the sign it will start right in front of the hotel they will actually let you know as well and the buses are like this perfect there are actually many ways to come to Macau aside from the ferry aside from the helicopter that I mentioned earlier, which not everyone will do. You can also do buses. The bus that goes from there are like transfer shuttle buses. I think it costs like I think 170 to 180 Hong Kong dollar. I'll put the exact price below. Uh, but of course, it's subject to change because weekday price and weekend price is also different. And right now, uh, it's a holiday weekend because of the uh, Mid Autumn Festival. So it's a little bit more, but it would take about three hours because you have to get from the Kowloon side to go to the border. And then, but you're going to see the scenic bridge that is extremely famous now. I think it's, it finished building in 2021. But by the time you get to the border and then come over here, it's about 
about three hours. I searched. The fastest was like two hours and like 40 minutes. That's why I took the ferry anyways. It really depends on your time. Some people just like a one stop. As in you get on the bus, you get off the bus. They don't want to be doing the car to the terminal and then to take the ferry. And then you get to the terminal and take another bus. You know what I mean? This is the Venetian. And over there with the gold top, I don't know if you can see. That is what you might call Galaxy, Macau. And these are residential buildings. You're going to see the famous canal in at the Venetian. Oh. And the Venetian Dist Tower, St. Mark's Plaza is actually in construction. I will show you a picture of what it looks like usually because that is actually a very, very good spot to take pictures for the Londoner. And in front of us next to it, you're going to see the Eiffel Tower of Macau. <laughs> right, guys, so arrived at the Grand Hyatt. I just made it to the afternoon tea. We'll have all assorted pastries and cake. And of course, you will have like refreshments and coffees and tea. I think it's daily at 2.30 to 4.30 every day. And then from 5.30 to 7, I think it's the happy hour. Just made it. I got some scones. I love a iced latte macchiato. My favorite drink that's outside of champagne. One good thing about being a member of the higher group or the Marriott group is that all of these like lounge assets and late chat out at like 4 p.m. It all comes with the membership. There are times that I do want to stay in boutique hotel. But when we're in like cities like Macau and Hong Kong, you know, like New York, Paris and all that, I always choose like big chain hotel only because of the benefits. Highly recommend. And they will give you like upgrade without you asking. And right. back in my suite. I think I got a gift from the hotel. I don't know where it is. It should be moon cake because it's mid-autumn festival. It is looking directly at the wing. There's a fountain show every 40 minutes. Pretty, pretty nice. And then here is a table with a bar, the bedroom. I think also have the same view and also looking over the bridge. Cute. Here's the restaurant, double sink. I'm gonna do my hair. Oh, and a bathtub. Not bad, not bad. All right, let's see what it is. Wow, my favorite purple. Yay. Beautiful box. Pretty, it's mooncake, and it comes with a handle. So pretty, guys. We're back at the lounge here at Grand Hyatt. So let me show you what they have for happy hour. They always serve one of like the best happy hour in all of the hotels. So let me show you guys. You will get these cold appetizers like coleslaw, and then you will have sparkling wine. You will get prosecco. Okay red and white these are the red and of course all type of other liquor a noodle station braised beef noodle hot dishes chicken wings and uh, some cold ones like salad mock salmon tama ham and salad bar got my prosecco a pretty nice burger so let's try it i mean you're gonna say that why are you going to eat in a hotel when you're traveling guys Trust me, I'm gonna have my take on the local food, which I'm gonna take you all tomorrow. But right now, I have a concert to catch. So eating in the hotel lounge is actually a very good idea because I don't have to walk around in the heat looking for food. So I will show you guys all that tomorrow. But just now, let me enjoy this happy hour. You guys all know how much I like my bubbly. So, And this view is really, really good, actually. I'm gonna show you the bridge. Grand Hyatt's Lounge is always so good. And this burger. Look at this burger. I'm a burger girl. I love burger. I'll see you guys outside. We are now on the way to the Londoner. What I love about Macau is that you can get to hotel to hotel with just like shopping malls like this. Not malls, but shops. McLaren, since we see the big band, this is the Londoner. And over there is the Parisian, and over here is the Venetian. The Londoner. Beautiful, right? Guys, this is the lobby of the Londoner Hotel. One good thing about these casinos is that most of them are all connected with each other and there are signs everywhere so you will not like get lost and stuff like that. So which is pretty good, you know? I 
I will show you like the outside of the London Eye right now. To me, one of the best photo spot is actually right here because once we turn around, you're gonna see all the deco. This is the Parisian Hotel with the Eye Hotel at the right? All right, so ready guys? This is the London Eye Hotel. The best time to take pictures is actually during sunset time and you see that bridge there. I'm gonna deco it. That actually connects you to the Venetian and eventually the Parisian Hotel and the Studio City. I mean, it's like the whole Europe in your fingertip. I always find myself back here every year. Uh, I don't come to Macau that often, but enough, you know, like a couple times a year. It is pretty. It's like a, a mini Euro panel kind of, because you have uh, Venice and Paris and now London. Now let's go eat. So guys, I finished my concert. Uh, I didn't want to go outside of the whole this hotel area to go eat. There are many restaurants in the hotel anyways, but I really wanted some seafood as, you know, this is a Portuguese, Portuguese colony, right? So I ordered some shrimp with garlic sauce a snack before I sleep because I'm gonna have a very long day tomorrow because I want to show you guys exactly what Macau is known for. The entertainment, the food, the culture, everything else, like the ruins of St. Paul. Uh, there are many pretty streets to take pictures. There are gazillion shows to watch. If you guys do have a chance to come there, are shows that you I highly recommend you to watch. One of them is called Dancing Water. I think that's the English name. It's one of the best show I've ever watched in my life. So I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys. Thank you for staying until the end. These are the five ways to get to Macau. Of course, these are also in the description box below. And hopefully, it can help you navigate your way to Macau. It's a fabulous city to relax. On next week's episode, I'll be showing you everything else that I did. Where it's a good place to look at the whole city. Uh, where, where are the street food? And if there's anything you should eat, what are they? And what are the popular spots? Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching.